What's up, everyone? Happy Saturday to you. What's going on? Hope your day is going good. You hear that thunder out here in Oregon, Southern Oregon? Or we're in Medford right now, but uh, it's starting to rain after all the hot days and everything. It's been crazy. But uh, welcome to another episode of Bible Sessions. This one is Free Yourself from Yourself. We're going to get into some topic. We're going to get into this topic and kind of dive into ins and outs of all kinds of things. So. Let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just pray for this message, God. The anointing on this message, that the body of Christ be present. Holy Spirit is welcome here. Holy Spirit can be fulfilled in this place, God. That the studying and the teaching that I come forward with today, God, that it reaches the ears to hear. So I just pray for the listeners, the viewers, God, that maybe this is a message that they're waiting all week to hear or something that's going to touch their life to, to, to change it all around and just be filled in the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, have your way right now, right this second. In Jesus' mighty name we say amen. God bless every single one of you out there. I hope everyone can hear. Let me know if the audio is good. Got some people watching right now. Uh, God bless you guys. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday. Um, so what I want to get into is freeing yourself from yourself. You know, a lot of our, a lot of us, we, you know, I, I speak to myself on this one when I come and talk about this because Many times and for several years, I put myself in a box where I can't be anything outside that box because I had so much failure. I've done so many, ba so many bad things in my life where I put myself in this whole little zone where I'm not good enough to go do that or this and all these things where, you know, and we just we feel unworthy. See, God is not interested in our past. I can't stress this enough. God is not interested in what we have done. I know the things that we have done in our life are not good. They make us look like a bad person. But honestly, if you think about it, the, way, the things that you've done in your past are what, create, are what made you who you are today. Amen? So God doesn't want to see the reruns. He doesn't want to see all the things that you just keep mulling over in your head trying to think, oh, well, I, met, I, I kept relapsing, so God's not going to have no place for me in the church or the kingdom. He's not going to have a place for me uh, in this family or this group or anything like that. He doesn't care about those reruns. See, when the past creeps up on us, ourselves, and we are the accuser, and us are the only ones that see it. In Romans 8.31, you guys got your Bibles handy. Romans 8.31 through 39, it says, So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare to even point a finger the one who died for us, the one who raised his life for us. Amen? It is the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for us. Jesus paid it all. Do you think anybody is ever going to be able to drive a wedge between you and the love that Christ has for you? I mean, a lot of people sit back and they go, man, so many things can't come between us. But nothing can come between you. If you're a man or a woman of God and you continually walk in the Spirit, nothing can come between you and the love that Christ has for you. There's no way, no trouble, no hard times, no hatred, no hunger, no homelessness, no bullying threats, uh, no backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in Scripture. Nothing can come between the love that Christ has for you. He's there for you without a doubt, standing right there with you. See, sometimes things will happen and we'll get beaten down. Have you ever had something happen to you where you just it beat you down so bad that you just felt like giving up? You threw in the towel and the things that you were doing in your life, you, all the dreams and goals you had, you kind of just laid back off them. You know, um, some might relate to it as depression, uh, being sad, being felt like you let yourself down and you cannot grow. You know, and be getting beaten down by this 
by the accuser and what happens to us is in the world. The world, we, a lot of us worry about what the world thinks about how we should go about and do things. When you fail and you refuse to try again, you stay in that failure zone. But if you fail and you get back up and try to learn again, you learn something better that next time. Amen? You don't always fail the same way. You may fail with the same thing, but as you keep trying and keep trying, you get better. Practice makes perfect and use it before you lose it kind of thing. Be filled. Understand that just because you got knocked down a few pegs doesn't mean you can't come up a few pegs or even more. Trust me, I've had it all. I've lost it all. I've been down to rock bottom several times, um, divorced, um, had my kids taken from me. I've been locked up. I've had everything taken from me. But now that my walk with Christ is strong, I refuse to stay beaten down. I've been knocked out by the world. I've been knocked out by everything that I touched, that I went for. But now, as I walk with Christ, I've gotten everything back tenfold, even more than I had before, to the point where I, I have plenty. I lack nothing. I'm rich with my family, rich in the spirit, rich with the things I have. I, I, I lack nothing. And what it took for that, it was for me to finally just tell myself, I accept that I can be free if I give it all back to God. If I keep believing in myself and I keep making sure that I can do better than my past failures, do better from the way I used to be. A lot of you guys know me. Some of you guys know me pretty well. And you would understand that I am better than what I used to be. And because I failed time after time after time, and I could not make sure, I could not, I can't make this up. I failed so much. And mentally, and sometimes verbally, I get mad and I'd say, I'm done. I give up. I don't want to do this no more. This is not me. This is not who I'm supposed to be. If this is God's plan for me, it would be easier. Well, God's plan for you is not going to be easy. Freeing yourself from yourself is not going to be easy. But it's beneficial if you put the effort in and things come together. Amen? Things are going to grind together. The gears are going to move in a fluid motion and it's going to work together. You got to stop being your own worst enemy. And we do that. We are our own worst critic. We do so many things where we feel just knocked down. We don't want to get up and try anymore. So many times we fail. Sometimes you know, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Some have said that. That, I mean, okay, so what are you sick and tired of doing? What has to change in order for those chains to be broken off of you? And this can be for anything. This doesn't have to be necessarily biblical, um, religious, as some would put it. Um, I'm coming at you from any aspect. I am bringing you the biblical standpoint on this because I believe that's what brought me up out of mine and brought many other, other people out of there um, where they had no freedom. Amen. So that's what I'm trying to talk about. But whether it's religious scripture, biblical, whatever, um, I'm trying to preach the fact that we can become free of whatever's holding us back. We just have to want it bad enough. Like, I want it bad enough for every single one of you, but I can't want it for you. I can't want it for my family that's still struggling. I just pray every day that they just get free, they find things out, and they understand that moving forward, closer to God and being in, in the body and the Holy Spirit, surrounded by men and women of God, that, that is where you can grow. Don't knock it till you try it. Get involved. Be, a, be in the right circle, the circle that's strong. Your circle doesn't have to be huge. You don't have to have a hundred friends. You can have five good friends that build you up in the Spirit. And with those five friends, you're going to find five more, and it's going to multiply. And when your life multiplies with the right circle, you will see the growth in your life. Amen? It will happen. I promise you guys. Thank you all for watching.
Appreciate you guys up on here. Um, if you're just joining, we are talking about free yourself from yourself. Um, just basically want to get into all the things that you feel that you've been knocked down. And what, how are you keeping yourself in your own mental prison? Your own prison that where you feel that you can't um, grow from where you are. Amen. See, a lot of things that we've done in our lives, the things that have beaten us down, either it might be something that we caused, it may be hereditary, or the family we came from, or the lack of family we came from. Amen? Amen? You just figure it out. I mean, some of us don't have the family support that a lot of other people do. I know in my early life, I didn't have, I had really good family support. But I, that wasn't until I was eight years old. That's as far back as I remember is when I had really good family support. Growing up before that, I didn't have the greatest of family support. I was able to walk the streets at any hour of the night. There was times when me and my brother would come home and mom wasn't home. And we couldn't get inside because it was her boyfriend's house. So what did we do? We stayed in the laundry room that was on site. We stayed in that laundry room to get warm. So having the lack of family or the lack of support could put you in a position where, okay, you know, when that door was locked and me and my brother went to go in the house, we just found another solution at a very young age. I mean, some would say maybe I was built for this. I was built for that kind of thing. We found another way. So when you get a roadblock in your life that puts you in a position where you don't know where to go, you have to have the, the power to find another route, another route that's going to get you what you need to have your necessities met. Amen? You see, and sometimes we may have caused the way we feel, and we have no control over it happening. No matter whatever the case is, whatever you went through, let's see here, uh -oh, my screen went black. It always tries to weasel its way in, no matter what you try. It tries to get in the middle between you and God. When something bad happens in your life, you feel like, God, why? Why is God doing this? And when you guys don't realize it's not God that's doing it. God isn't trying to push this into us. God isn't putting those mental thoughts of failure and we can't get up, we can't do the things that we need to do. We can't grow. That's not God speaking. That's the enemy. What do enemies do? They are against us. And God is what? He is uh, he's for us. For us and not against us. Amen? So when you put yourself in that position where you just feel like you're just knocked down, that's it. You refuse to try to find a way out, another route out of your situation. I tell you, when we're young and we don't get it, and we don't have the means or the any kind of way to do it or a vehicle to get there or anything to get out, we don't have that proper guidance. Things get rough. Things do get hard. But as we grow and we start to get wiser and start to learn things, you know, especially as I grew, I started to realize there's other options. That's another good reason why I'm glad when I left my mom's care and went to my dad's care, even though it was more strict, there was structure. There was a way out of me feeling less than. If my mom didn't want me, well, my dad wanted me. So I'm moving into a better direction. With me going to my dad, I, was, I got to bring my brother with me. I got to meet my sister. I got to meet my grandparents and live. We all lived as a family. But in my head, I, I mean, think, even thinking back to around eight or nine years old, I felt like, why doesn't my mom want me? Why doesn't, what's going on? What's wrong? Is it something me? Is it me? And I'm just growing and I found a new direction. I freed myself mentally to understand that God was putting me in a position to have a better life when I thought there was nothing else left. And I grew and grew with that mentality, living with my dad, even though there was strict and there was, there was structure, we butt heads sometimes, I was able to learn life skills that honestly I believe got me to this point today, right, right where I am. Through everything I've been through, every prison I've been, or every, like mental prison, uh, locked up in county jails, I never made it to prison, thank God. 
but every every downfall I had has brought me to this moment. I've overcome a lot, guys. Drug addiction, jail, um, gangs, dumb stuff. I've overcome so much, and I know several other people that have overcome these things. You know, and we have to find a way to make it work. And I found a way with the Lord. I was, I was raised Catholic, and I really didn't understand it, but I just knew that. And what I did learn as being a Catholic is I always wanted to do stuff with the church. Servant. I wanted to be a servant. I wanted to, to, to help serve and just be there and be able to help support other people. I wanted to grow within things. And uh, that's how I felt that I knew God was there. God wanted to be a part of my life more than I understood it. I wanted to grow with the Lord. And as I got more into it, as I grew older, I started to find myself going in other directions. Uh, drinking and smoking and still being that altar boy on the weekend. You know, I was just doing, I thought, what other kids were doing. I started to put myself into that category where I just like, you know, God's got me. It doesn't matter. Um, I can do what I got. I, I can do what I'm doing and things are just going to be the way they are. But it couldn't, it, it couldn't do that. See, if we're not careful... The way we beat ourselves up and we, the way we beat ourselves down, up and down, it can be the dwelling point. We, it can straight dwell in us to the point where we don't grow. We absolutely find an excuse for everything that we don't want to do and why we don't want to do it. Uh, we, we refuse to try. We refuse to uh, help ourselves. And that's one thing we do not want to be doing. We don't want to look behind and let our past corrupt us. I do a lot of self-reflections uh, about my past and the things that I've done in my life because I think it empowers me. Because I'm in the mindset now that I don't want to lose. I found Jesus. I found a spiritual connection that enhances my way of life. The things that I do in my life every single day, it has Jesus. Here at home, at church, at church events, everywhere. Music, these messages, I try and I do my best to keep Jesus right in the center of it. Because this is what brings me back from my past. This is what makes me a soldier. It, the one that you, I'm the guy that used to fail and give up every time I was knocked down. But with the strength of the Lord, I'm able to grow. And this is why I encourage people. To find solace in the Lord. To be strong in their faith. To find themselves where they can be connected with the Lord. Amen? And see, we need to look towards the future. Because the best days we have are ahead of us. Fifteen years ago, if you would have told me I'd be right here, right now, doing what I'm doing. Serving the Lord. Loving the Lord, having a wonderful family, a wonderful wife, a godly wife, teaching our children the way of the word. Come on. I probably would have thought you were joking, but this is what God's plan was. God's plan was to take me from back then and bring me right here where I'm free from myself. Do I have bad days? Do I get mad and irritated about things? Of course, but a lot less than I used to be. I used to stress so much on finances and everything. And you know, I mean, up till quite recently, the financial part. But now I'm just like, whatever, whatever happens, we'll make it work. It all, from month to month, our finances somehow all get taken care of. Why am I tripping? Why do I worry? Amen. So that's one of the biggest things I had to tackle. But I did not tackle that by myself. Nope, I didn't tackle that by myself. I had God's help. God's going to make sure that we have a place to live, things to eat, clothes to wear, every single thing that we need in our life. So why am I tripping? God's got this. Amen? You see, one of the most important things we need to do is to let go of that past and not revisit it ever again. Amen? Let's not revisit the past. 
Jesus cannot forgive us any more than we've already been forgiven. Let's get into what that means. God is not interested in your past. We mentioned this earlier. He doesn't care about the reruns. You know what God sees in us and all his sons and daughters? He sees true spirits of his sons and daughters. He sees forgiven souls because Jesus' blood covered it all. Jesus' sacrifice took care of the past once and for all and your future. And God only looks at your future. The past to him is no more. It's tossed in the sea of forgetfulness. It's tossed away. All the debt was paid on the cross. That's why I give so much of my life to Jesus and to Christianity and the Word of God. And I study the Word. I stay in the Word. Make sure I practice and, I, and I, if I don't understand something, I look it up. I study. I try to figure something. I talk to somebody about it. I include God in my life because God changed my life. Amen? And God can change any one of your lives. When you feel like you're stuck in that mental prison and you don't know what you're going to do, God's going to bring you up out of it. I guarantee it. That's why I choose this. Because God works miracles. If you would have told me who I would become, I, like I said, I would have laughed. It's crazy how it works. See, God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us. Embracing our condition, exposing himself. Oh, it's crazy how God just put himself out there for us. Put everything out on the line, and he just did not worry. He embraced the condition and exposed himself to the worst by sending his own son. So you think there's anything else he wouldn't gladly do for us? He wants us up out of the funk. God's willing to do his part. He already has. We've seen that. We've read that. We've studied that. We've learned that. But we really, we have to be willing to put on that full armor of God every day. That full armor of God that he has given us and walk with it each and every single day. Ephesians 6, 13 through 15 says this. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be by your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them to your life. Brothers, sisters, all of you, learn how to apply them to your life. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. The forgiveness that Jesus offers has its privileges. Freedom from any and all condemnation is, any, is one of them. And the condemnation, free life, is a beautiful thing. It's awesome when we don't have those things holding us down. We are filled with the Spirit. Things are growing within us. God has a plan for us. God has a plan for you right now listening or watching, whatever it is, God has a direction for your life that you must grow with. Fill it up. Romans 8, 1 through 3 says, in the New King James, 1 says, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. 2 says, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law, the law of sin and death. Three says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. If the law could not keep us on the straight and narrow before grace came into the scene, then it's certainly not going to do it now, is it? What keeps us on the straight and narrow? Right there, it says it right there. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. We are the weak through our flesh. But God sent his son to show us the strength, the strength in Christ that's going to bring you up out of your mental prison, your depression, your suicidal thoughts. 
It gets real, everybody. It really does. See, it's something that keeps us on that straight and narrow. It's up to us to maintain it, to be surrounded by the right people. See, there comes a time when a person has to draw a line and say, enough is enough. This is the last time I'm doing this, the last time I'm going there, the last, last time I'm getting loaded, the last time I'm going to the liquor store, the last time I'm watching pornography. There's so many things. You have to say enough is enough. Sometimes, for me, for getting clean and sober, something just clicked. But nothing just clicked without God. Amen? So, I, I, I mean, I give all glory to God in everything that I've been through, everything that I've grown through. I can't say I did any of it on my own. I had God. I had the surrounding of people that are walking in the Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, and things were growing with that. Amen? It's amazing how things work if you put in the work. Amen? If you let condemnation run, run your life, it will kill you. If you let everything that's drowning you be in control, it's going to kill you. Mentally, first, physically, last. And that's what we're trying to avoid here. Amen? You have to be the one that says there's no more. Today starts a new day. Manifest it. Pray about it. Positive affirmations daily. You guys, anybody in recovery and stuff, you understand these positive affirmations. Anybody that's, you know, been in any kind of 12-step group, um, any kind of life skills class, you understand these positive affirmations that you speak upon yourself. Manifest it into truth. We have to shed the old way of thinking. You know, even I just joke about my old ways of thinking, but still, less and less it's fading away. I mean, more and more it's fading away. It's becoming less and less in my life. But there are old ways of thinking. The criminal code, the gangs, how the gangs in the streets love us, and um, how the drugs were our friends, and how this person's going to be the best for us. You know, we do everything we can for this drug dealer so we can get our drugs or all this kind of stuff, but we won't give nothing else to positivity or give to God or give our attention towards the Lord. Stuff like that. I hope that makes sense. Shed the old way of thinking. Put it out with the trash. Let it go. It's time to step into the new. Amen? Who wants to step into the new? Anybody say new. Say new out there. New. It's time for a new life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 18. This is a really one of my most favorite verses. Therefore, if any person is in Christ, he is a he or she is a new creation, and the old has passed away. He's dead as a doornail, so quit trying, guys. Quit trying. Give it up. Don't try to be given your old life CPR and trying to bring it back. Just kind of hang out with him for one day of the week, you know, give your life fully to Christ. Some of you, I'm talking directly to you. You want to live your old life a little bit, come to Sunday and be all worthy and or be all filled with worship and stuff like that. Come on, give your old life away. You don't need it. It's just dragging you down. You can't live one side here, one side there, one foot in, one foot out kind of thing. You cannot do that. That's not going to help you grow. That's not going to free yourself from yourself. Says, Pat, yeah, Behold, the fresh and new has come. 2 Corinthians 18, or 5, 17, or 5, 18. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, basically received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself. Reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. Why do I do these messages? To share a life of encouragement, to share testimonies and messages. But I'm trying to bring you into harmony with Christ. All I can do is just preach the message. Get it out there. I can't change you. I don't want to change you. I would love for you to be changed if you need to be changed. But God does that work. When you accept that into your life, you will get that. You're able to receive that and be filled in the Spirit. Amen? 
See, hump, sometimes we have a hard time letting go of the past. And I can, I can really relate to this because I've been there. I didn't want to stop getting hump. Why stop if I ain't got to stop? Would you stop if I told you you need to stop? Those kind of things. I don't want to stop. If I, if I wanted to stop, then I have to give something up that I truly love. And that's just hard. See, the past is still making it about us. We become selfish when we go back to our past and we try to just keep living it out. Try to live that old thug life, you know? Uh, you just can't shake it. It's hard. It's different. And it's very bad. It's, it's, it's very, very bad when we, when we refuse to let it die. And as long as it is about us, we really do not see what God has done for us. It's crazy. See, the world is watching us. And what we have is what the whole world is in search of. Ooh, thunder out there, boys. It's getting strong. God's happy. <laughs> Amen, you guys. Getting a little bit of rain out here in Southern Oregon. Boy, oh boy. We didn't expect this today. It's supposed to be 81 again tomorrow. But that's how God works. Is what the world sees in us going to bring us in harmony with him? What do we? What the world sees in me? What the world sees everything that I do or everything that you do? Drinking and drinking and smoking at the club, doing your thing. Um, what the world sees you doing is that going to bring others to God into harmony with God? I know that the way I live my life right now is that God sees that I'm trying to bring others to him. I want people to see, oh, look at John. Look at the way that man um, studies and learns his word. Um, I could actually call on him and ask for prayer. I want that from you guys. Call on me. I will pray with you. I will talk with you. I will just conversate and try to figure things out with you. Amen? That's what I want. And that's what that is right there. The world is watching us. But are what they seem going to bring them to God? See, our testimony should be our greatest witness. Everything that you went through in your life, everything I went through in my life, amen, that is what's going to bring others to God. It's going to show that massive transformation. That is the biggest witness that we can ever have. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose, honestly? Everything that he's done for us has given us the strength. He's put me in a position where I feel like I can do anything I put my mind to. See, what God wants us to do, he wants us to start walking in his blessings, abiding in the vine, receiving everything that he has for us. Are you ready to receive everything that God has for us? It's amazing that the things that we do in our life shows a reflection of who we are. What you welcome in your home, the things you welcome on your TV screens, movies, music. If the wrong things can pollute you, can pollute you and what the kids are bringing up on their phones or what we have on we have our we walk around with a computer in our pocket, most of us, a cell phone, and has access to everything. What are we allowing ourselves to be imprisoned to? The things that we allow in our life, I mean, it, it can be so many things. All I can do is encourage you to not let yourself be imprisoned by those things. Drop them. Enough is enough. Free yourself. Amen? Amen? Also sharing what we have done, or sharing what we have learned to others is a good way to bring things out. Amen. It's time for the world to see us apply Christ to our lives. I'm I'm out in the open about it. I believe in God. I believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again. He died for our sins. 
I believe that he can save you just as he saved me, even though I was a, uh, I was just the, one of the worst you could ever have, worst person you can ever be. Amen. I believe that God can change you and bring you up out of everything that you're going through. I believe it. It's time for the world to see us worshiping and praising, giving thanks to God and doing the things that we need to do. Proclaiming that he is king and that we can do the things and he gives us the strength that we need. Amen. God is amazing. God can change everybody. You just have to be willing to change. Amen. I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. I found this online here. I've got the fruit of the spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine. Abiding in the vine. Love, joy, health, peace. He has made them mine. I've got prosperity, power, and victory. Abiding in the vine. We have prosperity, power, and victory when we abide in the Lord. And I emphasize this so much because God has been there. He has been my rescuer. He has made me the head of my household. A man of God. To teach my young ones and my kids how it's going to be. Today during uh, worship at the men's breakfast, I was sitting off to the side and with my son Caleb. And we're just sitting there. And he's asking why we sing these songs. So I was telling him that we worship. We just talk to God. It's a time for prayer. Just find yourself in a comfortable position. So I was able to basically explain to him why we worship. And... Uh, you don't necessarily have to sing along to the songs, but find yourself in that communication, that direct connection with God. Like I was sitting there praying. I said, sometimes you, sometimes you just sit here, son, and you just pray. And thank God for all the wonderful things you have. And uh, he started saying it. Thank you, God, for my mom, my dad. Thank you, God, for my house. Thank you for food. And he just, that's, that's God. This is how we free our kids before they get stuck in the prison of the world, right? This is how God changes, and I was able to share that with him, and it kept him calm. He only said he was bored a couple times, but I mean, <laughs> that's just a six-year-old. He's almost six, but I was able to share that with him, and that's why I get up on here week after week and just share these messages with you, and they're not going to stop. I'm going to continue to study, dig in the Word, be strong in my faith, so I can give you raw love, and encouragement, scripture, based biblically, and all that wonderful stuff. God is good, you guys. See, all the blessings we enjoy freely today were made possible by Jesus dying on that cross. Don't turn it off right now. Don't click out of this right now. Stay right here. Stop scrolling. <laughs> you made it this far. Keep watching. I'm almost done. Christ died for us, and he was raised to life for us. And the presence of God each and every single day is sticking up for us, is not allowing us to fail. We put in the work. It's going to be hard work, not so hard. It ain't going to make you sweat. It ain't going to make your back sore. But putting in the work, he's going to stick up for us. Don't ever let your past keep you from your future. God's not going to hold it against you, and neither should you. It's time to come over to God's way of thinking. No more John's way of thinking. No more whatever your name is thinking, you know. Just put it in your own context. Switch your mind over to God's way of thinking. What would Jesus do? What will, how, how, how am what I am doing now, how does that please God? Amen? you got to figure these things out. you got to understand and wonder how your life can be so much different and better, moving brighter into a better future if you just change your thinking and your mindset to the way God is, the way God thinks. Know that God has put his blessings on you and that only you can keep them from happening. Learn to walk in those blessings and know that you are worthy of every single one of them. You are worthy of every single one of God's blessings. Amen? 
and manifest that in your life right now. Something that you're going through right now, you are going to grow. You are going to be better than you were yesterday. Amen? You're going to wake up tomorrow refreshed, wanting to change, give up the cigarettes, the drugs, the pornography, whatever is holding you down right now, you're going to give it up. Enough is enough. Your mental depression, the pills the doctors put you on, you're going to find a way to get off of those pills. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you will find out, you'll find deliverance from those things that are holding you down. Enough is enough. Be filled. Claim your inheritance and make them yours today. Claim your inheritance in the Lord. Be filled in the mighty spirit. God bless every single one of you guys. Hope you have a wonderful night. It's stormy outside. It's Saturday, uh, August 17th. I just love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the views. Please share this to wherever you can. You know, I do this every week live. Uh, it's freestyle. I have a few notes and I just go. I share my life stories. Like I said, the testimony, our testimonies are our biggest witness. That's how we tell people. When you got 10 5, 10, 15 people together sharing their testimonies, you're going to see God move. You're going to see the amazing life that's here. God bless you guys. Let's end this in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God. You're amazing. I hear Mother Nature out there right now just rumbling, God. I hope this is pleasing to you, God, the things that we do in this life, these messages, all this studying, God, that you just fill this whole place. You fill those watching and listening, God. You fill their house right now right, with the Holy Spirit. You fill them with enduring love, understanding wisdom, God, that you would fill them up. When they start to feel empty and depleted and depressed, God, that you just lift them up, put them back on their feet and dust them off, God. Reach into their lives right now, Heavenly Father. The blessings and the love that you share upon all of our lives, God, you are amazing. And you change us and you move us and you mold us into the people that we are supposed to be. Even when it feels, it feels strange and uncomfortable, God, you put us where we need to be. Put us on our feet, back on our feet again, and fill us up. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I say amen. God bless you guys. I truly do love you. Hit me up, make comments, whatever. I'll talk to you personally. It doesn't matter. Live. Save to serve. Love you guys.